1985, Deja Vu was released on the Apple Macintosh and was the first of three point-and-click adventures to be developed by iCom Simulations, the other two being The Uninvited and Shadowgate. While Shadowgate was the first of the three to be ported to the NES in 1989 by Chemco, Deja Vu soon followed in 1990 with several enhancements and additions such as full-color graphics and an excellent musical score. If you had the privilege to play Shadowgate on the NES before Deja Vu, then you know what to expect and how to play. The D-pad replaces a mouse, the A and B buttons confirm and cancel respectively, and tons of puzzle solving and outside of the box thinking are required to solve this dark and engaging mystery. The gameplay is almost exactly like Shadowgate as you pick up and collect items which can be examined, used, and interacted throughout while uncovering clues to regain your memory and clear your name. The main difference from Shadowgate is the setting and storyline. The game begins with your character waking up inside of a men's room stall, confused and devoid of recollection of how you ended up there. Upon exploring your surroundings, it's evident that aside from the aesthetics and mechanics of the game, Deja Vu is vastly different from Shadowgate. For one, the setting is set in Chicago 1941, and any supernatural elements found in Castle Shadowgate are absent here. Upon discovering a dead body slumped over a desk, it's obvious that this game was geared toward an older audience, somewhat of an anomaly for the NES back then. For me personally, the hard-boiled atmosphere the game provides offers a certain charm which I find irresistible considering what a big fan I am of the noir genre. And the music fits the scene too. While not as memorable as Shadowgate, Deja Vu's tunes are perfect for the story and melds with the environment as well as an 8-bit game can. Another difference from Shadowgate is that this game seems to be a lot more challenging. Deja Vu probably has twice as many items to collect than Shadowgate, even more items to open which reveal yet more items to gather. While not all items are mandatory, you really don't want to risk leaving anything behind. Unlike Shadowgate, there seems to be less encounters with other beings, in this case people. Drunks, women seeking out vendettas, and even an annoying mugger cross your path as you try to solve the mystery of your identity and the whereabouts of evidence to clear your name. There's a tremendous amount of trial and error in this adventure, but luckily you can save your game at any time, so make sure to save often, as you'll have to try out different combinations of items and clues to solve certain puzzles. Now while the game may sound exciting and mysterious, it can get tedious at times. For example, you learn of different addresses throughout the course of the game, which requires you to take a cab ride to your desired destination. Not only do you have to speak to the cabbie each time and select which address you need to head to, you then have to pay the cab fare using coins from your notepad, which are often found on the very last page. And if you're low on coins, you must plug coin after coin into a slot machine in hopes of winning the jackpot. And don't even get me started on dumping evidence into the sewer. Besides these minor annoyances, I definitely recommend this game. While I feel it's not as good as Shadowgate, it's still right up there, and once you begin to learn how to play and begin solving clues, the story becomes quite engrossing and sucks you in. Who would have thought? A murder mystery on the Nintendo Entertainment System. This adult-themed story is a welcome change for a system that for the most part catered to children. The cartridge won't cost you an arm and a leg, and I can almost guarantee that once you finish the game, you'll be pressing start to go through it all over again. Check out Deja Vu.